So in class we were talking about injective, surjective, and bijective functions, and I gave you this problem. Find an example of an injective function from n cross n to q. That means that this function would have to take in a pair of positive integers as input and produce a single rational number as output. So I phrased it as find me an example of a function, and then one of the students gave me this one, f of x, y equals x plus 1 over y. And I wasn't really expecting something like that, but it turns out this is correct. Here's an example of an injective function. So let me show you how to prove that. Remember what the definition of injective function is. So if I have a function f from a set A to a set B, okay, then f is injective. What that means is that two, no two different inputs go to the same output. So if, whenever I have two different inputs, let's say, let's say, um, yeah, x and y, then f of x is different from f of y. So no, if I have two different inputs, then they have to have two different outputs. They can't be the same output. Now, another way to phrase this is I could take the contrapositive of this statement. Contrapositive is f of x, y, or sorry, f of x equals f of y implies that x equals y. That's the contrapositive of the same statement. Okay, and this is, I find usually easier to prove injectivity using this contrapositive here. So let's prove this now. Let's prove that this function f is injective. So let's, using this contrapositive, let's suppose I have two inputs that go to the same place. So f of x equals f of y. Although in this case, x is a pair of natural numbers. So I say it like this. Suppose that f of a comma b is equal to f of c comma d. What I want to show now is that those two inputs were the same. So a, b equals c comma d. a, b equals c, d. Okay, and remember what that means. When a pair is equal, that means that each coordinate is equal. So a equals c and b equals d. Okay, so I want to show a equals c and b equals d. Okay, and all I can do is work with this definition here. f of a, b equals f of c, d. So from that, I can conclude that a plus 1 over b, that's f of a, b, equals c plus 1 over d, that's f of c, d. Okay, my instinct at this point is to clear denominators. So I'll multiply both sides by b, d, and I'll get a, b, d plus d equals c, b, d plus b. And my next instinct is to look at this and say, okay, this term ABD and this term CBD both have BD as a factor. So why don't I collect those? Why don't I say ABD minus CBD by bringing things over, rearranging the equation a little bit. ABD minus CBD equals B minus D. And I factor out this BD here. So I get A minus C times BD equals B minus D. Okay, nice. And now all I can do is stare at this equation and think, why does this imply that A equals C and B equals D? Well, there's a couple different ways to view it. One way I think is by saying, okay, why don't we bring this B to the other side? And the reason I think that is because then I can factor out this B and this B, right? So on one hand, one way to approach it is to Let's bring this b to the other side, or actually let's bring this to the right side and the d over to the other side. So I get d equals b minus a minus c times bd. And I can factor out the b, so I have b times 1 minus a minus c times d. And the whole point here is I see that b times some integer is d, right? So this integer, this expression here is an integer. So this tells me that some multiple of b is equal to d, which of course is the same as saying that b divides d. Okay, that's one way to approach it. But another way is to do the same thing symmetrically. Instead of bringing the isolating d, why don't I isolate b instead? So that's another approach. 
So I could say mm, B equals A minus C B D plus D. So I just brought this negative D to the other side of the equation. Okay, and now let's factor out D. So B equals A minus C times B plus one times D. And now I can make the same logic. Here's an integer. So I've proven here that b is a multiple of d. So that tells me that d divides b. And how can two natural numbers divide each other? How can b divide d and d divide b and both are positive? The only way that can happen, only way b can divide d, remember b divides d is this bar symbol here, the only way b divides d and d divides b is if b equals d, which is part of what I wanted to prove, wasn't it? I wanted to prove b equals d. So how do I get a equals c from that? That's not that bad. Let me make some space. How do I get a equals c? Well, I can just look back at this equation and say from here, plug b equals d into this equation, a plus 1 over b equals c plus 1 over d. So maybe I can replace this d with a b. So I say a plus 1 over b equals c plus 1 over b, and I can cancel these 1 over b's from each side, and I clearly get a equals c. So nice, I proved it. I proved that a equals c and b equals d. So that's the end of the proof. So it's a nice example of an injective function from m cross m to q.